Let's delve into the 1961 movie Paris Blues. This film features actors like Paul Newman, Sidney Poitier, Joanne Woodward, and Diane Carroll. It follows the story of two American jazz musicians who explore Paris and find love. The movie takes us into the lives of expatriates pursuing their dreams amidst the city's jazz culture. As we go through the movie, we'll discover interesting, surprising, and sad facts. If you've seen the film, which actor did you like the most? Paul Newman's charm, Sidney Poitier's presence, or Joanne Woodward's performance? Let us know. Also, do you remember a scene that left a lasting impression on you? It could be a dialogue, a musical performance, or a romantic moment. Share your thoughts. Lastly, do you have any special memories related to this film? Maybe watching it with friends, finding it on a rainy day, or recalling a moment it reminded you of. We'd love to hear your stories. Join us as we explore Paris blues filled with love, music, and unforgettable moments. Get ready for laughter, surprises, and tears. Stay tuned for more insights about this classic movie. A 1961 movie that received mixed reviews upon its release depicted interracial relationships and showcased the talents of its stars, including Sidney Poitier and Paul Newman. The movie's jazz soundtrack was well received, but some critics found fault with its pacing and plot. Despite this, it left a lasting impression on popular culture, inspiring merchandise and adaptations. Soundtracks featuring its jazz music became popular, and posters adorned the walls of fans' homes. The movie also influenced other filmmakers, leading to the creation of similar works exploring themes of love, music, and culture. In conclusion, while it may not have been a blockbuster success, the movie's celebration of jazz music and portrayal of interracial relationships continue to be remembered fondly today. Amidst the filming of the movie, Paul Newman and his wife Joanne Woodward grew weary of French cuisine. Braving the deep winter, they ventured into backyards to grill steaks, much to the shock of their neighbors. The movie holds the MPAA register 19792. A curious detail unfolds when Paul Newman stands before the Marie Soul Club Prive sign. Beneath the accompanying painting lies the inscription Club 33. It's worth noting that Club 33 is not just a French establishment, but also the moniker of a private club nestled within Disneyland. These off-screen anecdotes provide a glimpse into the unique experiences and moments that transpired during the making of the film. In one scene, Lillian in Ram's apartment plays a melody that resembles the future theme from Close Encounters of the Third Kind, except for the final note. Paul Newman learned trombone playing from Billy Byers, while Murray McEachern provided the trombone soundtrack. Sidney Poitier's tenor saxophone playing was actually performed by Paul Gonsalves. The soundtrack was recorded in New York City in May 1961 at Reeves Sound Studios. Before the Channel Tunnel, the standard route from England to France was by ferry and train with later options including hydrofoils and hovercraft. In 1961, Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward, a cinematic power couple, collaborated on the film set, sharing the screen in Paris Blues among other productions. This movie marked one of the 16 joint ventures in their prolific career together, with Newman's involvement extending beyond acting. Notably, Paris Blues stands out in the cinematic landscape, showcasing Duke Ellington's musical prowess. Despite receiving an Academy Award nomination for Best Music, the film is not a traditional musical. Instead, it unfolds as a romantic drama set against the backdrop of jazz. Interestingly, the directorial reins were initially offered to Alexander Mackendrick, revealing the intriguing dynamics in the film's pre-production phase. In summary, Paris Blues, a 1961 production, encapsulates the collaborative synergy of Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward, blending romance and drama in a jazz-infused narrative. Duke Ellington's musical contribution adds depth to the film's atmosphere, and the initial consideration of Alexander Mackendrick as the director adds a layer of historical curiosity. In a rare occurrence, two actors who later became a married couple each earned Academy Awards for their acting Joanne Woodward for her role in The Three Faces of Eve and Paul Newman for The Color of Money. However, Newman's Oscar victory came 25 years after the release of a particular film. During the filming of that same film, Woodward discovered she was pregnant with her daughter, Melissa Newman, who was born on the very day the film premiered in the United States. Throughout their careers, Woodward and her husband Paul Newman collaborated on 16 films. These included The Long, Hot Summer, Rally Round the Flag Boys, From the Terrace, Paris Blues, A New Kind of Love, Winning, Yuza, The Drowning Pool, Harry and Son, and Mr. and Mistress Bridge. Newman also directed or produced several films featuring Woodward in leading roles, such as Empire Falls, Rachel, Rachel, They Might Be Giants, The Effect of Gamma Rays on Man in the Moon Marigolds, The Shadow Box, and The Glass Menagerie. 
In a movie set in Paris, the story came together with help from Marlon Brando's film company, Pennybaker Films. However, Paul Newman ended up taking a role in the film instead of Brando. At first, they thought about having Marilyn Monroe play Joanne Woodward's part, but she lost interest too. Throughout the movie, you see famous places in Paris like the Arc de Triomphe, Le Sacre Coeur, Montmartre, the Eiffel Tower, and Notre Dame. They also show scenes of everyday life in Paris like the bird market and the river boats. One important scene in the film is a show called The Wild Man at the Palais de Cello. This place used to be called the Palais de Trocadero and was changed for an event in 1937. It's famous because a photo of Adolf Hitler looking over Paris was taken here in 1940. The palace was where the U.S. Army celebrated victory in Europe Day in 1945 and where the United Nations made the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948. In Ram's Paris apartment, there's both a telephone and a television set, luxuries uncommon among working-class Parisians. The Paris Bird Market, where Gypsy and Ram stroll as Gypsy seeks a fix, occurs on Sunday mornings on the Isle de la Cité. However, authorities are moving to shut it down permanently. Joanne Woodward had appeared with the movie's co-producer Marlon Brando the prior year in the film The Fugitive Kind. Director Sidney Lumet noted steady tension between the two actors, though the reasons remain unknown. In a bustling scene, Diane Carroll returned to filming shortly after giving birth, showing her dedication to acting. On screen, Joanne Woodward hands Paul Newman a newspaper from January 21, 1961, adding authenticity to the era. As the camera captures the streets of Paris, viewers are taken back in time. Sidney Poitier and Joanne Woodward share a table illuminated by candlelight with a bottle of Perrier water between them. These details bring the film to life, creating a story that appeals to people of all ages. Paris Blues is a classic movie, appreciated by many generations. Throughout the film, the talented cast shines, making it a memorable part of cinema history. In a notable twist, a tragic event occurred during the making of a movie from 1961. The director, Martin Ritt, faced the untimely loss of his daughter, Julia, which cast a somber mood over the production. The film revolves around two American jazz musicians living in Paris. He portrays their personal and professional challenges, including their relationships and love for music in a foreign city. The movie captures the lively jazz scene of Paris in the early 1960s, featuring performances by Louis Armstrong and Duke Ellington. Their music becomes an integral part of the story, reflecting the characters' emotions. As the characters interact with two American tourists, they explore themes of love, identity, and cultural differences. Despite its acclaim, the film remains somewhat overshadowed by others of its time. Nevertheless, its portrayal of interracial relationships and the Parisian jazz scene continues to connect with audiences today. In summary, the movie offers a poignant look into the lives of its characters against the backdrop of an evolving city, showcasing timeless themes and memorable performances.